23. Determine the entropy change for the combustion of gaseous propane, which is C3H8, under the standard conditions to give gaseous carbon dioxide and water. Okay. So, all they gave us here was just kind of talking us through a reaction, right? We have a combustion reaction of gaseous propane, and they told us what the products are, right? They told us that we're producing, we're giving off gaseous carbon dioxide and water. Now, in the grand scheme of things, we want to find out that entropy change, right? Determine the entropy change. That's the question. So entropy, remember, is capital S, and a change is final minus initial, right? But that can be signified as a delta, the triangle. So in this case, we want to find out the change in the entropy, the delta S value. And remember, when we're talking about entropy, we're talking about the randomness or the disorder or the chaos of what's going on in those containers. So we're just looking for randomness of the molecules, chaos or disorder, right? So maybe we could kind of estimate whether our delta S is going to be a negative or a positive and see if our actual answer, you know, comes up to, to being that. Now, what's a change in entropy if we don't have an equation? So that's the first thing we got to do. We got to write out what this equation is. But they're, they're giving us a key here. They're telling us that we're doing a combustion reaction, right? And combustion reactions always follow the same type of format. You will always start off with your hydrocarbon. A hydrocarbon is the compound that has the carbon and the hydrogen, right? Hydro, carbon, hydrogen, carbon. So we have C3, H8, and they're telling us that that's a gas, gaseous propane. So I'm going to put a G here. And every time that you have a combustion reaction, remember, that always means that you're adding O2. And the oxygen that you're adding is the gas. So C3H8 plus O2. Gas. And these will now form your products. Now, they did tell us that we're going to give off gaseous carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is CO2. And it's a gas, so I'll put a G here. And water. So we're producing another compound, we're producing water. These are standard for combustion. Now in this case, they did say that we're giving off gaseous carbon dioxide and, because of English you know, grammar and sentence structure, this would also be gaseous water. So gaseous carbon dioxide and gaseous water. So this water that they're describing is also in a gas form, not a liquid. Now, since we have the equation, we just have to balance it, right? What's an equation without making sure that it's balanced? With um, combustion reactions, the easiest way to do this is to start with your carbon. So I have three carbons here. I have only one carbon here. So I'm just going to put a three in front. Cool. Carbons are balanced. Let's go to the hydrogens. Eight hydrogens on the left side. I only have two hydrogens over here. So two times what will get me eight? Yeah, I'll put a four here, right? Two times four is eight. Two thirds of the way there. Now let's just balance the oxygen. So on the product side, I have three times two. So I have a total of six oxygens here, plus, literally plus, four times one. I have four total oxygens here, so I have a total of 10. On my left side, I only have two, so two times what will get me 10? Yeah, I'll just put a five here. And now the equation is balanced. So I'm just going to erase all this. And now we are good to go. The next thing is, since we're dealing with you know, finding out entropy changes, delta S values, and they told us that we're under standard conditions. This means that we're going to use the standard values in the back of a textbook. So we're technically finding out a delta S notch. This notch, this little like degree sign up here, just represents that we're dealing with standard values and those standard values are going to be found in the back of the textbook. So that's what I did. I went to the back of the textbook to find out what these four substances delta S values are. So let's just drag them on over here. So 
The delta S for the C3H8 is 270.3, 205.2 for the oxygen, we have 213.8 for the CO2, and we have 188.8. Just make sure that you're taking the H2O gas one, because it's gaseous water, and not the liquid one. Now let's just uh, finish this out. I'm just going to take this and say, okay, these were all of your S values. And now I can blow this little chart away. Beautiful. Goodbye. What's next? Well, what are we going to do with these values? We have to put it into some type of formula. If we're solving for delta S for the whole entire reaction, and we have all the S values, it's a pretty simple formula of this. Delta S just equals the sum, that's this little squiggly line here, the sum, which means addition, right? So just put a you know, plus sign here. The sum of all your products, so that's all on the right side, minus the sum of all of your reactants, your delta S's. So I take my, my S values, I sum them all up on the right side, take my S values, I sum them all up on the left side, and then I just do a little subtraction. But now, are these numbers going to be the same or are they gonna be different? Well, this is why we have to write the balanced equation. These values are only for one of your substance. But for example, if I have five O2s, I can't just take this value, I have five of them. So I have to multiply them by their coefficients. Keep in mind that for C3H8, I only had one in front here. So I'm going to take the 270.3 and technically you times it by one because there was one in front of the C3H8. There's a five in front of the O2. There's a three in front of the CO2 and a four in front of the H2O. So I'm going to take my 205.2 and times it by five. I'm going to take my 213.8 for the CO2 and times it by 3. I'll take the 188.8 and times it by 4. Now, since it's the sum, literally there's a plus sign, right, in between the two reactants, so I'm just going to add them together. Plus sign in front of the products, I'm going to add these two numbers together. And that's the whole entire sum for both sides. So let's see what we get for the reactants, the blue side. So I get 270.3 plus 5 times 205.2. And I get 1, 2, 1,296.3 on my total on my left side. And then let's do the right side. 3 times 213.8 plus 4 times 188.8. And I get a total of 1,300. And 96.6. .6. Cool. Now, these are the values that I'm going to use for my equation. So, let's go for it. Delta S for the whole entire reaction. Notch means standard. Rxn just means reaction. Equals the sum of the products, 1,396.6 minus... Oops, see where that minus go? There we go minus the reactants of 1,296.3, and let's get an answer. So the delta S, the change in entropy for the whole entire reaction, is 1396.6 minus 1296.3. I get 100.3, and the units for delta S, if we're using standard values, is joules per mole times Kelvin. And that is your final answer. And then, can we predict this sign? Right, I said in the beginning, can we predict the sign by giving the balanced equation? This was a positive, which means that our products are more entropic, more random than our reactants. And you could look at it by the highest uh, value for your gases. Remember, gases have the highest entropy. So on the left side, you went from a total of six moles of gas, because both of these are gas, and then you ended with seven moles of gas. So you did increase in the amount of gases. That's more randomness. That's why this is a positive number. There you go. I really hope this helped.
Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel and go check it out. We got physics and math videos at the moment with more subjects coming your way. So hopefully we can help you out in any way that we can. I hope you have a great day. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this channel. They'll really help the channel out. And I hope you're doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.